It's my pleasure to invite Dr. Nitin Agarwal Vaidya, an Ayurveda doctor practicing Ayurveda for over 24 years. He's an expert in pulse diagnosis and panchkarma treatments. He is known as a formulator and researcher of Ayurveda medicinal and herbal formulations according to international standards Ayush, European Union and US FDA. Dr. Nitin has integrated the classical Ayurveda with modern scientific tools and knowledge. He is among one of the leading thinkers and young leaders in the field of Ayurveda. He has been regularly invited to speak at various international conferences, seminars and webinars. He is also the founder and MD of Bliss Ayurveda Private Limited, chairman of Alliance Ayurveda Research and Training Institute and national secretary of Vishwa Ayurveda Parishad. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Dr. Nitin Agarwal Vaidya. Namaste. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak to the audience today uh, with United Consciousness organized on International Yoga Day. Uh, I am Dr. Nitin Agarwal. I am, of course, an Ayurveda doctor and expert in punch karma treatments and a research formulator of Ayurveda medicines and supplements. I congratulate everyone on this International Yoga Day and uh, also congratulate the organizers, United Consciousness, for organizing such a wonderful conference for three days to commemorate this special event, which is yoga, which is important in our day-to-day -day life. We all know and realize the importance of yoga in our life, which is even more profoundly relevant now after this unfortunate COVID pandemic. Yoga and Ayurveda has a unique combination and are integrated to each other. Yoga is not just an exercise as many people think. It is the union or coordination between mind, body and consciousness, which is also the definition of health or perfect health in Ayurveda. If we are not mentally or emotionally or healthy, if our consciousness is not uplifted properly, then even if we have a strong physique or a strong uh, body, we are still not healthy, we are not happy, and we cannot enjoy our life. So that is why this whole in combination of mind-body co consciousness is basically what yoga is. As we all know, Maharishi's Patanjali's principle of Ashtang yoga, and today it is very beautifully being defined, especially by United Consciousness, having different sessions on yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, dharan, dhyan, and samadhi. Today, we will be talking about uh, uh, the principles of yamas, and I myself will be talking about one of the five yam, or yamas, as we call them in English, about aparikra, ahinsa, brahmacharya, satya, aparigra, and aste. These are some of the major uh, principles uh, of yam. And based on these principles, uh, it are basically principles of self-restraint, typically representing commitments that affects one's relations with others, not only with others, but to ourselves. And aparigraha is also one aspect of that on which I am talking about. Aparigraha meaning minimalism is the need of the hour. That is the topic that's been assigned to me, which I have to speak about in my next 10 minutes. So, friends, it is very important to understand this whole aspect of yoga that which has been given to us uh, and this principle of aparigra. What exactly is aparigra? Aparigra is the virtue of non-possessiveness, non-grasping or non-greediness. It is also the principle of let go of what is needed and what is not serving us. It is like neutralizing our desires to acquire and hoard things, which we can see in tons today. As Bhagavad Gita also mentions, the key to happiness is reduction of desires. Take only what is necessary in life and don't exercise the advantage of situation or act greedily. So this is basically the 
easy way how to define a parigraha for a common man minimalism which is again like a english explanation of uh, a parigraha so what exactly is required is today's need what exactly minimalism or a parigraha is is the ability to simplify without losing any quality it is not about removing things that you love it is removing things that detracts you distracts you from the things you love so it is a very important thing that if we follow the principles of aparigraha then we don't lose any quality in life in fact it enhances the quality of life it enhances love and happiness in our life so need for less often results in the life for more we all know today we live in a world that is driven by consumerism where we need to eat more shop more and indulge more this consumerism is linked to increased anxiety emotional stress and comparisons as well as destroying our environment and nature so what it is bringing us on the table like we all we see all around ourselves that we live in an environment where there is a greed for more more and more and more we are working hours and hours for years and years to achieve more without knowing what exactly is more and what exactly will bring us satisfaction or happiness we just forget about that and in that we lose relationships we lose friendship and even warmth within the family we forget that we also need to serve our society and support by nature and in turn what we achieve we achieve grief we achieve sadness we achieve depression we lose happiness and there is no bliss in life we can see that lot of successful people rock stars bollywood or hollywood actors very prominent personalities uh, they are suffering from depression they may have a lot of money they may have a very higher position in society but they are not happy they have sadness within their consciousness is not uplifted and even some people commit suicide it sends shock waves around the world what went wrong with them why why all these successful people commit suicide or are into depression they have everything what we are running for we what we are planning to achieve but ladies and gentlemen it is this very basic principle of aripagraha that they have lost in life that we need to sit back and think that you know what is more important is happiness even when we talk about natural resources in our environment we need to be aripagrahi which means we need to be very pragmatic while using this natural resources they are integral part of our environment they exist without any positive contribution from mankind we only exploit nature for our living and livelihood we are getting water wood material to build large infrastructure houses electricity petrol natural gases minerals you name anything and we are getting from the nature unfortunately every natural resource has its limits and we are using these resources excessively exploitation of natural resources is affecting our environment and we must minimize the use of natural resources to save and protect our environment and that is why i mentioned we have to become aparigrahi in using natural resources even water drinkable water that is also depleting we can see in cities like delhi maybe all major cities of the world that drinkable water or ground water is depleting and reducing is only 2% available on the earth which is locked mostly in ice caps and glaciers which are also melting unfortunately therefore it is very important for us to minimize the usage of water and restrict its wastage completely we definitely need to follow the principles of aparigraha while using a water eating habits we all see it is directly related to our health most of the lifestyle related diseases occurs due to overeating we don't follow the principles of aparigraha while consuming food i travel a lot to north america to european countries which are called developed countries i live with a lot of families there i see that they go to a shopping mall and buy tons of food they just 
stock their refrigerators with the food for almost a week or 15 days. And after one week or 10 days, they see that half of the food that is stocked or stuffed in the refrigerators is not consumed and it's been thrown away into dustbin. And that is loss of consciousness. That is pragya aprad, mistake of the intellect, according to Ayurveda and yoga. Because what we are doing, we, that our consciousness is forgotten that time, that in a lot of parts of the world, and even in their own countries, many people don't have access to proper food. They don't have access to the food that we have thrown in the dustbin. So we should think about that and be a parigrahi in using that. Ayurveda advocates, person should eat less than his appetite and he should always leave one fourth space of the stomach empty, not only just for the consciousness, but also for their own healthy life. Because all the lifestyle disorders like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, cholesterol, triglycerides, and accumulation of armor or toxins in the body, which leads to numerous diseases in the body, are mostly due to result of overeating. So that is why even for our own health, this is required and necessary. That brings us to the spiritual level of the principles of Aparikraha. As Lord Buddha's philosophy said, the root of suffering is attachment. In Hindi, we always say, ye sab moh maya hai. Aur jitna aap usme padoge, utna hi aap dukhi hoge aur parishan hoge. So detachment, of course, uh, people think, how practically is that? But to some extent, if we follow these principles of Aparikraha, it helps amplify you know, our happiness and bliss. Bliss is called Param Anand, which we feel from inside. And this is the philosophy, if we follow, then we can achieve happiness in life. We can achieve success. And as I mentioned before, without reduction in the quality of our life, without reduction in the quality of our environment, we can still enjoy what we have. So ladies and gentlemen, this special subject of Aparikraha, even Yam, and the whole concept of yoga should be understood or should understand very clearly by all of us. And that will be the benefit or contribution to this International Yoga Day that we all, including United Consciousness, is trying to give to our society, not only to our society, but to our own families, to our own friends, and to our own consciousness. So I hope we are able to enjoy this and thank you very much for giving me time uh, and uh, namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much, respected Nitin Agrawalji. So beautifully you mentioned the concept of Pragya Aparadha and uh, you rightly connected Aparigana to experiential living. I'm sure that people from different parts of the world would have understood the spiritual science behind it and medical science and the social sciences also you mentioned that how your life can be overall happy with this principle of Aparigraha. We are honored to have you here, Agrawal Sahib, and we'll remain in touch. Thank you very much for being our honored guest. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations once again for organizing such a beautiful seminar, Dr. Thank Vigan. you. Thank you. The guys. On behalf of United Consciousness, I thank Dr. Nitin Agarwal Vadhyay for sharing his views and coming on to the platform of United Consciousness. Thank you so much.